In this tutorial, I will be dealing with the problem I had in the previous one. That is, although I was copying files, I was not replicating file and directory permissions. Now, there is a utility called ICACLS, and I will be using this utility to deal, to overcome that problem. There are two parameters of this utility that could be of interest. The first one is the slash queue. That allows you to suppress messages. I will not be using this parameter. The parameter I will be using is the slash t. On the page I've, I've posted, you can find more information about this uh, Windows command. Now I'm taking the previous batch file and I'm going to modify that. The first thing I'm going to do is I am going to export the access control list, the file permissions, from the source directory and store them in the source directory itself. Then I am going to use rsync to replicate both the files themselves and the access control lists and at the destination I will use that same file to rebuild the file permissions. So basically it's, it's three stages. At this point, if you look at the, the batch file, you will see that I am now saving the file permissions, the file and the directory permissions at the source end. So I specify what I want to save, the save option, and where I would like to store that file. Following that, I will use rsync as I did last time. Here you can notice the slash t option. And now I will, once the copy is over, replace whatever file permissions were transferred by rsync by what was originally present in the source file. So I'm dealing with this problem, um, so to speak, creatively. Obviously, you are going to transfer an additional file, but in effect, this file is a text file which will be highly compressed and um, I believe should add very little overhead especially the second time now. If you know of any uh, other approach um, that, that could address this, um, please contact me. Because this utility um, will be replacing access control lists, it, the batch file must be run as administrator. So you have to invoke the command file or if you're writing running it through through a process that process have to have administrative rights if you are transferring files on the same computer or on a very high speed network it might make more sense to place the acl file at a, in a central location save to that location and read from that location this will avoid you having to copy or transfer the file across here i have my two directories my source and my destination command prompt as administrator and now i'm going to call up my image now, although things happen very quickly, you will notice that a new file appeared. First it appeared on the source, got replicated, and, and then it was applied. 
as you can see though the file permissions are identical.